Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I am Richard Leela Neal, and today we are discussing cultural appropriation, because my good friend James did a video about that, and of course we want to support his videos, so he is a lecturer in England and a very intelligent man. So here's, here's the thing, is that apparently some, I believe they're an American personality, got corn rolls in their hair, which I, it's a type of, it's a type of doing up your hair common when women do the MMA fighting. They do up their hair so that they can have long hair, but not have that hair be pulled. And then this was misattributed to being some other person that had this style, but it was not the origin of their style. And everybody came out there and said, cultural appropriation. Now, I wonder if cultural appropriation is an American concept. I don't know if they have this in England, but here is the thing. Corn rolls started in Egypt. That's, that's kind of where they come from, but all mankind started in Africa, so the fact that we all came from the same place kind of makes this cultural appropriation silly. Anthropologists and historians and archaeologists have recently discovered the first immigrants to England had very dark skin and blue eyes. It's one of those things. Now, where I think cultural appropriation, not the term, but where the thing sort of began to spark in our culture, in my American culture, is there was a singer by the name of Elvis who was the most famous solo act of his time. He was that generation's version of Michael Jackson and I think they're saying that Taylor Swift is the next Michael Jackson. But So there was Elvis, and Elvis was a Caucasian who went out and had a singing style very similar to African people of recent African descent in America, which they were all upset because, like, well, you're taking our style. Firstly, you're not taking the style, you're emulating a style, and flattery is, is the, the best form of, or emulation is the best form of flattery. That's one of those things. That's the first thing there. And then, then the, the second thing that, that comes out uh, very clearly is, I mean, I'm not taking that you, you can still do this. So, so this, is, this is the thing. And I mean, again, I'm a man of Hebrew descent, okay, Jewish. And... When I look at the entire world, I see how the entire world has appropriated my culture. Why? Well, do you brush your teeth? Because that's a Jewish thing. We were doing that for a long time before much of the rest of the world. Do you wash your hands? Because that's a Jewish thing. We were doing that for a long time before the rest of the world. Do you keep your food clean so you don't get sick? All of these things come from, they may not have strictly come from there, but all of these come from the Jewish Talmud, which is a, a book, an interpretation of the Levitican laws of the Old Testament. So there's that thing, and this is, of course, very good. But I was watching The Late Show with Trevor Noah, and this rather large woman of recent African descent said that cultural appropriation is a thing because when you're a minority... All you have is your culture. That is just silly. You're an American now. When you live in America, you identify with your ancestors, like I identify with my Jewish ancestors, okay, and I identify with my Irish ancestors, because I have ancestors in Ireland, and... You know, my name, my last name is Neil, which comes from King Nile of the Nine Hostages, who is a prehistoric Irish king who is famous for the symbol of the red hand. He's from Ulster. Ulster, I can never pronounce it right. And, I mean, the story is that either him or one of his ancestors 
uh, was was winning was was in a boat race, and they cut off their their hand and threw it to the shore to win the race, thus becoming king. So we're children of the red hand, and it's this big symbolic thing. But here's the thing you have to understand is that. Most likely, I am not related to King Nile himself. I am most likely related to one of the servants of King Nile. Possibly even a slave. So a human being that was owned by the king, and therefore given his name. A serf. I am very likely not genetically related to King Nile at all, I am most likely a child of one of his servants, you know, 200 generations removed or whatever have you. So, it's kind of that thing. When you look at history, if you look long enough, we all came from Africa, we're all human beings, we all come from the same place. Alright? And this is why it's like the idea of cultural appropriation is don't identify yourself as being part of a group. Identify yourself as an individual. Be proud of who you are and what you do. And if other people are trying to be like you, don't go out there and be like, well, hey, you can't do this. No, no. Let them compliment you based on the fact that you're doing something well. I mean, I remember the, the last two people I met that had dreadlocks. One was a Caucasian and one was a recent African uh, descent. And the guy, the Caucasian, had huge dreadlocks that made an enormous statement about his laid-back nature and the fact that he was very happy-go-lucky. He was very hippie dreadlocks. Whereas the other guy had, had the more traditional, looked like uh, more of a warrior thing, and he had a very combative nature. And there's the thing, the texture and way the dreadlocks worked, kind of fit into the personality of the, like, the, the guy who was combative, he had dreadlocks like the Predator from the Predator films. You know? It's like, uh, yeah, I, I can tell you're, you're saying something about your ancient warrior past, but, you know, one is not detracting from the other. Okay, so then I have to bring a final point, is that one thing that we should we should be conscious of in our society is the concept of the double standard. And double standards are bad. So when we say there should be no double standards, doesn't matter who you are, if you're being a jerk, this is a bad thing. And it's, I remember I used to work at this place where there was a Latino, and that's what he identified as, who talked about the fact that he used to be a Marine. He was a Marine reservist. He was a Marine accountant. And what he would do would be evaluate the credit of Marines. And he said, he would walk up to me every day and he would say, Oh, you're white. Denied! And it's like, okay, you're a racist and that's not funny. That's the thing about double standards. Is It's like, look, if you're the kind of person that says, you can't do that, my culture did it first, well, if I said that, you'd automatically call me a racist. Therefore, if anybody says that, it kind of makes them a racist. When, when Barack Obama was elected president, I said, yes, excellent, this is the man I voted for. All the racists, well, all the racists who look more like me, said, how dare you? That's our thing. And, you know, I'm sure there are some people that see uh, a minority winning an Oscar. We recently had our, our Academy Awards here. And sees them winning an Oscar saying, how dare you? That's our thing. Like, no, we're just trying to include you into our world. And, you know, if, if we look at your culture and adopt something from your culture, what we're saying is your culture is beautiful and we want to know more about it and we want to be closer to it. So that's why, you know, if you look even in this room, I have a room full of books here. One of these books is a book of folklore and it covers the entire world, every continent that has people on it. 
And I recently, for one of my other channels, I recently recorded a video uh, about uh, stories from the Aborigines of Australia. Because I read that book. And, you know, we now are all citizens of the world. The idea of cultures is something of an illusion. If you, you interact with other people, their culture spills onto you, whether you like it or not. It's one of those things. Anyway, that's my opinion. I can hear the hate, uh, the clacking of keys as hatred pours towards me uh, regardless, but it is an honest opinion. And just go right ahead and tell me how wrong I am in those comments below. I am Richard Leland Neal.